Absolutely. Fabulous. Yeah. Thanks so much for that, Patrick. And I know for some of our listeners, they, they might not be familiar with the Legion of Mary and, and the kind of work that we do. But um, like I said at the beginning of the talk, we will have an email address available. So if anyone would like more information, please do feel free to contact us and uh, we'll, we'll bring you in. No problem. <laughs> You're always welcome. Always. <laughs> we won't send you to China. No, <laughs> she brought air flights to be in England instead. That's, that's, that's it. Um, so, sure, without further ado, then for our last speaker, I'm just going to make sure, Father John, are you are you with us? Yeah, you are. Brilliant. Good to Every see you. Every bishop thinks so. Every bishop, yeah. <laughs> we can't get enough of you, Father. <laughs> so yes um so father john i'm just going to give you a quick introduction i hope you, i do you justice okay so father john walsh is a dominican priest he was born in enniscorty county wexford and he studied at maynooth university oxford and rome he is the promoter of dominican tertiaries he's the promoter of retreat ministry and he is the prior of saint saviors in dublin and parish priest of dominic street he has such a deep love for Our Lady, and we are so blessed to have him here with us to speak on the life of Our Lady through the Rosary. So, Father, you're very, very welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, it's a privilege to be with you. I just, I've spent the whole afternoon uh, transferring a Cistercian monk back to Mount Mellory and back again. So I've uh, talked about Our Lady's intercession at the Rosary the whole way down and the whole way back and um, to get him back to his monastery with the guards trying to figure out what this white thing is and that I wasn't a Muslim. But anyway, I got there and I just got in the door literally. So Our Lady, if Dominicans don't talk about the Rosary, uh, we're all in trouble. Uh, I spent the last eight years up to about two years ago, um, part of my role was to promote Mote the Holy Rosary for the Irish Dominicans, um, which is a very difficult thing to do because it's so private. The Rosary um, apostolate and preaching it, um, we always say that we're, we're always preaching the Rosary. We might not necessarily call it the Rosary. Um, the mysteries of the Lord's life. Why would we do it? It's life. It's, it is, as Karen asked me, in, in, in the Botanical Gardens a few weeks ago to give this talk, it's, it's hope that it offers and the life of Mary within the Holy Rosary. The first thing I would say to anyone in the Legion, if you have any problem um, in your life or you're going through a bad patch in your life or you're going through any struggle, and I've lived in a religious life now for 22, 23 years, uh, and there's many ups and downs today in the, in the Irish church, particularly and in our communities, what's the answer? And I would say that St. Xavier's is a house of formation uh, for the training. And some of you would know a lot of the younger Dominicans. Um, when a brother comes in trouble to me as the prior of the house, um, I always recommend one thing. Um, I say, are you saying your rosary? And they have to by our constitutions, our institutions say we must say the part of the rosary every day is part of our life. But I often, are you saying the rosary like Our Lady of Fatima asked? And he'd say, you know, I say the rosary with the community father, you know, before Compline every night. And I said to him, are you saying the rosary? And he said, yeah, I am. Are you saying the full rosary? In 15 decades. And you can see the shock in their face. But I don't have time with studying. I don't all this. And I said, your problem will be solved if you say the rosary. Your problem will be solved. It doesn't mean it'll disappear, but you'll suddenly start seeing the veils that come down, the difficulties that come down on you they're lifting and that's why it's a supernatural thing saint dominic in his own life our founder is behind me there so dominic as of course the order is the order of preachers he was preaching against heresy uh Albigensianism, and it was failing it was failing this is back in in 1216 it was failing our lady appears to him outside Crouy in france uh, in the forest and she said i want you to preach my soul that's our tradition our psalter the psalter of mary said she said it was like the dew falling on the earth preach the mysteries of, of my son's life preach them tell the people about the incarnation of christ so we see ourselves as preachers of the incarnation that the word became flesh that god became man that everything he has answered in his life for us to live in in, in this world that god knows what it's like to be a human um, and she said that my preach my rosary to be like dew falling on the earth for your ministry I could honestly tell you that as the Legion of Mary um, and my love for Our Lady, my vocation goes back to her at the age of seven. 
in knock as a young child after a, a horrific car accident a joyrider hit me as a child knocked me left me on the side of the road my aunt brought me to knock and i came back from knock and i wanted to be a priest at the age of seven the psychologist today would say you suffer such a trauma that's why you entered up in, in religious life whatever whatever you're into i'm still in it after all these years and uh, but it's horror i go back to knock about seven eight times a year pre-covid and I always went to the shrine to the exact place where I felt I was loved. Um, that's what my vocation was. And I'm no Saint Therese of Lisieux, by the way. I'm not love in the heart of the church or anything like that. I'm, I'm, I'm a torn in the side of the church sometimes. But it's love in the heart. And it was there in Knock that I fell in love with Our Lady's Shrine. And I just felt loved in, inside, because that's what God does. It was inside um, that I felt loved. And it changed me. And I came away and I said to my aunt on the bus, six and a half hours back to come to Wexford is I said I want to be a priest and it never left me and it was all through Our Lady so I go back there when I can go back there and I always say to Our Lady just give me a glimpse of 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 that that encounter again you'll never get it again but I live out of that memory so when I have a bad day or a hard day or you feel things are going wrong for you I go back to that memory Pope Benedict was very clear on that in his ministry as Pope was go back, Catholics go back to the mysteries of their life, to these encounters. They go back and they pull forth grace from these mysteries. I go back to knock when I feel I doubt things and so don't know where God is working in and why is this disaster happening? Why is this gone wrong? I go back to that moment and say, I know I can trust you. I know I can trust you. So I revisit that place where I felt loved and that answers me all through the years of religious life, all the times when I said, I want to go off and get married. I want to get away from this crowd. I live with 22 Dominicans and Dominicans. So you try to live with 22 of them. It's like living with Jack Russell sometimes. And you're saying, ah, oh, get me away from them. Um, I go back to Our Lady then. I go back to that moment and say, it'll be all right. So it's very simply put to you, is, is that's my answer, is I go to her. She is my hope. Why is she my hope? Because Our Lady teaches the church and teaches its members one thing is god does it all god does it all she is the why that's why she's the reason of hope she's the manifestation of god's grace in the world that god does it all we we don't make ourselves holy we can make ourselves so i can't make myself holy by saying the 15 mysteries of the rosary i need that in my day to cut out three parts in my day for 15 minutes to sit with my mother and to get the graces of the sorrows and the joys and the glories. Um, I need it, but I need her to intercede for me. And that's why I do it. I ask her to accompany me in that time. And I really feel if you make space, and I know as a Legion of Mary, I mean, I'm preaching to the severely converted. You're more converted. I love a conversion, by the way. I've never been converted. I love one of these conversions the young Dominicans get. I'm dying for one of those. Um, it just hasn't happened. But when you make space for Mary, in your day, even if it's only five minutes of a visit to Mary. You see that in all the spiritual writings. We talk about visits to the Blessed Sacrament. It's very important, the graces that are there in the Blessed Eucharist. We all know that. But do you visit Mary? Do you, would you make a visit to Mary? Would you make a visit to her statue or her little shrine or her altar, especially every day? We Dominicans would say, well, we do it because we're always going around with her. Big rosaries hanging She's always with us. Um, the, her rosary should be in our pocket all the time. But when you're feeling the crunch of life and you're feeling annoyed by the person in the car in front of you, like I was many times today, I put my hand on the beats and said, okay, I pray you out of the way. You know? She gives you hope that God does it all, that God has a plan. And we see this immediately. If you run through the mysteries very fast, and from the Annunciation, Mary's fear, the fear of what's going to happen. Her life is changing rapidly. Any plans she has had, God is changing them. God has a plan for her. She's accepting. She's open. The, the words that this there is, she, she contemplates these things in her heart. That's a tough word in, in its original Greek and in, in Latin as well, because it doesn't mean just to sit there and think nice thoughts. It, it's the same word that's used to beat a pillow. Do you know when you're giving your pillow a good, we should anyway, every morning, fluffing it up, She's really trying to understand what is God asking me here? How can this be? How, how is this going to take place? Um, and God leaves us with those answers constantly. It's, 
what's going on? What's going on in the church at the moment with COVID? Well, where are our leaders? You're all going through that. You go back to Mary in that mystery and you say, all will be well. This too will pass. Um, so even denunciation is, yes, it's acceptance. It's acceptance of something you don't understand. I think if Mary knew ahead, if all of us know tomorrow, you wouldn't get out of bed tomorrow. You wouldn't get out of the bed. You'd stay in your bed. If you knew what tomorrow was going to bring, I, I can definitely testify to that. I would not be getting out of the bed if I knew what was going to happen in this community tomorrow. I don't. You just take it every day. And she gives you that grace to live this moment. So if you're into the present moment, there is the answer. So even from the denunciation, the visitation, I was only speaking to two brothers in the car minutes ago, saying, what was the difference between the Legion of Mary and all the other youth groups? And a lot of you are involved in these youth groups. A lot of them, is, they're needing a lot of prayer. A lot of our priests are involved in giving talks and lectures. The one thing I love, really love about the Legion is it's not just prayer groups. It's not just navel gazing at my prayer is dry and all, you know, solid important stuff. The Legion make you work. The Legion make you go out. And it's one of the, and this is why it's so lasting, that under Mary's patronage, you go out, but on the street, into the hostels, you go to the doors, the people here in Downing Street, you're forced out of yourself in trust. You see that in the visitation of Mary to Elizabeth. She's going forth with great difficulty, with great joy. You may go to a door, you may meet someone on the street. Why are you going to say to them? You never know. You never know what you're going to say. And, and as a priest, even, I make so many boo-boos in the things that I say. But you just trust if you begin your mission by invoking a Hail Mary. Dominican preachers, for many centuries before they would go up the pulpit, they would always start by ascending the steps, by seeing the Hail Mary. In some of our pulpits, it's carved, Hail full of grace, the Lord is with you, the whole way up. So you invoked her intercession to bring forth grace before you walked. It's a very small thing. The nativity of the Lord, you can feel as well in your own life, the difficulty of, of the rejection that happens in Bethlehem, the difficulties, no one wants us, we're unwanted. You can see the difficulty of Joseph in this year. Joseph, he's a provider. All he has is a smelly, stinking shed. That's all he's given. And say, God, where are you? What are you doing? Why are you doing this? Mary means, remains peaceful. She's, she's focused. She's given birth. Any woman given birth is not worrying about the surroundings. She doesn't care if it's the Burlington Hotel, the Shelburne, or her own bed. The most important thing is the child. She teaches us that. Bethlehem also teaches us that the darkest place on earth, which was for them, and Joseph's trial is there, is his great crucifixion as Bethlehem. Is that heaven touches earth in that place? It's a bit like knock. Heaven touches earth by God coming down. It's the first time the humans will look down on God. The first people to go in there will be the prisoners, the ex prisoners who are the shepherds. Then you get these wise men coming much, much later. And, and there are all these foreigners, all the nations are coming in there. So, in the darkest, darkest place of your life, wherever you may be tonight, or wherever you may be thinking about, you say, This is a mess. This is not what I want. Is this all true? Trust Mary. Heaven touches earth in, in the darkest places. You go to the presentation of Mary, the presentation of the child Jesus in the temple. I always laugh to myself, and excuse my way of thinking of things, but you have, there they are presenting the child, and Simeon will say, oh, by the way, this child's going to break your heart. You can see Joseph saying, tell us about it. We've gone to Egypt. We've been out of our home. Our whole lives have changed. This is not what we plan. Now, what's going on? This child will break your heart. The secret thoughts of many will be made bare. Our hearts are broken as Catholics in so many ways these days. And, but the heart, Leon Bloy, great philosopher, said that in the heart there are places that do not yet exist because they have to suffer in order to open up the heart. Compassion, the word compassion, compassione, it means to suffer with someone. Therefore, when we suffer with someone out of love, the person in the street, the person in the hostel, the person in the flats around us here, when you listen to them and hear their stories, you have to share their passion with them, their suffering. Therefore, the heart is enlarged. This is Mary. That's why she told that the secret thoughts of many may be laid bare in you. The secret thoughts of many. There's a lovely image in the life of St. Catherine of Siena of a great, great plague that hit Siena. And Catherine is asked to make bread. She used to make white bread for the poor, but the corn had turned black. And Catherine invoked Our Lady and said, help me feed the poor with my sisters. Um, and in this vision, Our Lady appears. And I love it because Our Lady rolls up her sleeves. Because imagine Our Lady rolling up her lovely blue sleeves. And she starts mixing the flour with Catherine. 
that's always an image of the rosary. This contemplating the mysteries, pulling the life out of it, getting the juices out of it, and springing it forth in grace. The flower and the bread turn out snow white and not black because Our Lady had been invoked. It's the same we pray to her before we do our ministries in so many ways. So even when things look bad and the world tells you it's not going to work, uh, invoke her. I've seen that in my life so many times in community where brothers will tell you, we tried that in 1984, it didn't work. And keep saying, well, I'll invoke the Immaculate Heart and I'll consecrate it to her and let's watch out. And that's it. She always does it. She always does it. Very simple experience. The finding of the child Jesus in the temple, think of that. Three nights of not, not sleeping. My mother used to wait up every night when my older brothers and sisters were out. I was an altar boy. I was too good, basically. And uh, she'd wait up, as mothers do, until my brothers and sisters came back in at night. And she'd say, is it good night or good morning? Um, wonderful. And it's the image of Mary. Can you imagine Mary suffering for the three days and the three nights? Imagine the suffering she went through. Imagine Joseph. You think they slept? They didn't. There's so many parents today in our world who need to know this mystery. And I know them from this area and I know them from my own family experience and everything. When a child goes and disappears, goes abroad, the parents longing to see them and worrying about them. And you say, well, Our Lady understands you for three days and three nights. She may say, why did you do this? She says to him in the temple. Why? He said, I must be doing my father's business. The father's business is very painful as Catholics for us because it's not what we want. But Our Lady is allowed to share in these sorrowful things for us. So she's so close to him. She watches him being abandoned. Let's go up into the sorrowful mysteries. She watches him abandoned by his friends. I remember listening to my own mother, listening to my elder sister saying, my friends are not talking to me in school and this one has abandoned me. And my mother trying to console my, my, my older siblings and saying, ah, they're not really friends. They are not. You couldn't console them. Our Lord is abandoned by Peter, James and John. They fall asleep. The lady's aware of that. So when a child comes home feeling abandoned by the world and hurt by the world, Mary is the answer for that. She's watching him scourged. It's the same mystery. Parents today, as you might meet them, and you have to minister to them and say, you know, in our Lord life, our lady watched her son suffer by being scourged by insult. And child comes home and says, she said this to me in school, and she said this to me in work, and she hurt me, or he hurt me, he did this. Our lady sees this in the scourging of the pillar. Crowning with thorns, how many young people today are so filled with anxiety? And mental depressions, terrible sicknesses of the mind. So I always pray for those who suffer from any mental illness, the crown of thorns. Our Lord is crowned for that. That's the ministry of the rosary. So I would say for anyone who's suffering any mental, anything mental, um, anxieties, fears, fretting their future, pray with Mary about her son being crowned for us. The carrying of the cross when a parent watches their child carrying crosses awful stuff and they want to carry it for them Mary stands and watches and she may say back why this let me suffer not him she allows it to happen his crucifixion and death again it's a wonderful thing when you're working with people and they've lost a child I work in the rotunda an assistant chaplain when, when they need a priest um, for, and there's quite a few um, but six babies die a week down there naturally and uh, that mystery has helped me so much that Our Lady stood and listened to the last heartbeat of their child. I know so many mothers who have listened to the last heartbeat of the infant within their wombs um, and then been able to do the funerals with them and help them. That mystery has helped me as a priest. That Our Lady listens to the last breath and the last heartbeat and wondering why. And next Saturday, we will have Holy Saturday. And it's a day of intense prayer to Our Lady, always in our tradition anyway, is that we gather with Mary, who, when all the apostles walked away, Mary kept trusting in the darkness, kept the faith alive, saying, this is not finished. Even though it looks finished in our human sense, there's more going on. There's more. There's more. There has to be more. We have a great tradition that St. Vincent Farrer preached on, saying that why is on, on, on Easter Sunday morning, why isn't Our Lady mentioned? Because she's there throughout it all. And why isn't she mentioned? Why isn't she the Magdalene? And Vincent Farrer always said that he went to Mary first. Why? Because he was a good Jew. Honour your father and your mother. Because you could imagine Our Lady in the Magdalene meeting and saying, oh, you, oh no, your son appeared to me first. We always believe Our Lady didn't go to the tomb and that's why it's not recorded. 
was because she knew she knew her age. She knew she didn't have to go to an empty grave. She was alive. And uh, it's a great one for Easter Monday and Easter Sunday. Mary's never mentioned at the tomb because she knew. And we believe, I believe, that he appeared to her first. He did. So it's this hope that, that we all need that you will get in the Holy Rosary. And it's this mystery is dripping, even when you're not conscious of it, even when you're driving the car and you're not thinking about the mysteries, you're still holding her hand. You're still praying with her. You're invoking her. And I, all I can honestly tell you in this very simple talk um, from a mad Dominican is that the rosary will change your life. It will change your life. Um, it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, it's a slow dripping of dew of grace into your life because in Mary, we see it in hers. It's God doing everything. And, and the rosary, as one brother told me when I took over here as prior in Dominic Street, he said, he said uh, welcome to the bitter chalice of Dominic Street in a big community and formation community with all its issues. And he said, I know, he said, for you, he said, Our Lady will make the bitter chalice sweet. I consecrated the church and priory here um, in my first month. It was the month of August. And I promised her the first Saturday because I love Fatima. And let me tell you, it's been very sweet. It's been very sweet. She's tried me and she's tested me and she's exhausted me. Um, but I keep trusting because I know there's more. And that's what the rosary has done for me. It's the answer to so many troubles in our, in our society. For people who don't go to church, people don't practice. I've met so many people who say, well, I still say the rosary. I still say the rosary. I was talking to an ex-seminarian who was nearly, nearly was a priest and he left many years ago. Uh, he lives in this parish and he said, I give up my faith and I give up mass. It's amazing what happens. And he said, I start to sing the rosary again. He started going back to mass again. But he started with the rosary. So, yeah, it's the answer to my happiness. It's the answer to, to all the sufferings that I've ever gone through, the small things and the big things. I've clung to the rosary and I've been faithful to her that way. by like just giving her that. So I've given her a rose garland, yeah, three times a day. Um, but if you have a trouble and go to that that's the answer for me that's why she's our hope because she teaches you in those mysteries how to live as a human how to be free and how to trust in blind faith sometimes to trust in the darkness that there's more to this there's more to this if you don't have mary you're not grounded you're not grounded and uh, you lose sight of christ and um, because he becomes a god as a distance I lived in Italy for about three years um, and, and abroad and, and back in Ireland again. And still among the Irish people, you just scratch them. They'll never insult the Blessed Virgin. She's still very much the mother. Our grottos, our shrines all over the country, it's still a testimony that when you scratch away the paganism of the Irish people today, it is the answer to a new evangelization. She's the first step in for an awful lot of people. Is Do you ever say a prayer? Do you ever say Mary? Do you ever say a decade of the rosary? Get them going. And as Fulton Sheen says, you will convert sinners. They'll either throw the rosary down or they'll become saints. I have a long way to go to become a saint. But Mary is the cause of our joy because of her yes. And her yes was the changing of her life, of all her plans. So that's my secret for you in a simple little talk. Say your rosary. And if you're really having a bad time, Give Our Lady the 15, but visit her every day for a few moments as you'd visit the Blessed Sacrament. Visit her little statue in your home or somewhere that it is and spend a few minutes with her and say, just love me as a mother. You, know, she may, you may sit in silence with her because that's what mothers do. Um, I remember my own mother, when we were sick, our mother would sit with us beside in the bed, not speak, but she knew she was there. Uh, we need to become more and more aware of that maternal love of her. It's a very simple faith that I'm speaking about, very simple actions as a Catholic. Um, but the rosary, don't be worried about distractions. When you're praying for special intentions, yeah, you get distractions because the devil doesn't want you to pray. He doesn't want you to use that sword, which is Mary's sword. I don't like the idea of the rosary as a weapon. It wouldn't be our tradition. It's, it's the filling of the mind with grace. Uh, and our minds in these days of COVID, particularly, they need those graces of those mysteries that yes, life is sweet, life has its trials, um, but there's more, the story is never ending. So wherever you may be tonight, or whatever you might think is so dark, or past the end, whatever negativity may be feeding your mind tonight, forget it, 
get rid of it. I tell the brothers out of the table here every day, turn off YouTube, turn off the news, turn it off. Go back to the mysteries of the Lord's life. They're rich, juicy grapes. They make the finest wine. And that wine we'll only drink in heaven. So may our lady intercede for all of us. Cling on to her, hold on to her, uh, and preach her rosary. Preach it by giving it to others, by encouraging others. Um, to, but firstly, convert yourself first. Convert yourself. How do you convert yourself? God does it. God does it, but he needs you to save you. Um, and a simple way, my simple way, my simple ladder is the rosary. Truth bigger than she gets truth. She gets all truth. Mary conceive it out sin. Pray for us who oh, have recourse to thee. Amen. 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 Thanks so much, Father John. That was beautiful. Um, yeah, I really that that message of you know that compassion and you know sharing sharing passion enlarges the heart. I thought that was particularly beautiful. Um, and it's so true. It oh, really yeah. is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I said, I've funny. My heart is on fire <laughs> after <laughs> listening to that, Father. And just actually, just one quick thing as well. You know, you were you were talking about how the Irish people. They, they have a great reverence for Our Lady. And I think it's always been that way. That's embedded in the Irish culture. Mm -hmm. And I think it was even during the, the penal times, which we're seeing pretty much today, is that, you know, I think it was uh, an account by by Oliver Cromwell who, who had stated um, that, um, if I have the right historians or the, the right figures of history, but that there's an account of, um, of Cromwell that he said that, or oh, these these Irish, they, they keep holding up these bead thingies, and we don't. They won't. They won't prevail. They won't. You know, they they won't back down. And I think it is. I think the Irish in the Irish culture, you know, it's the, the Rosie and Our Lady is very much embedded in it. So you, you have to remember with you have to remember with the Rosary. I mean, people will say today about the COVID times, we're not here to get to mass, and 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 yeah, there was a time there was eight Dominicans left in Ireland, only eight left, and there was four of them here left in Dublin in the whole city, um, and they were imprisoned. Yeah. But the only thing that was going on, which one thing that the Dominicans had embedded into the culture, was that, and it lasted into my grandmother's generation, mm -hmm. was the evening rosary, and and they used to call it the mass of the evening, yes. because it was celebrated at seven o'clock in the evening. Mm -hmm. And that's how we kept our faith is through the rosary, because we kept bringing the gospel mysteries into our homes when we couldn't go to mass, mm -hmm. which which was we just couldn't because there was no priests there or we were in danger of it. We pray the rosary. That's why Ireland survived the Reformation, because of the rosary, because we knew the mysteries of the law and they couldn't get it out of the Irish people. So in the COVID times, when we can't go to Mass and we're longing for it and we're longing, yeah, we can pray in front of the Blessed Sacrament in the Tabernacle. And thanks be to God where we can do that. But the Rosary is the answer to an awful lot of the anxieties that are there in the evening. So I can't, I find it hard to keep the faith. And I keep saying, are you saying the Rosary? <laughs> and I say, forget it, forget it. We will be back to Mass. There's no doubt it's God. Um, say the rosary because for 400 years that's all we could do legally mm -hmm. and we can get families together so if you got one set tonight well push yourself as another one and say here mary <laughs> get me over to and i tell you it's, it's so simple but, but i believe it i really believe it with my heart and um, i am privileged as a priest to say mass every day at the community i mean i were blessed um but i would say to my parents man i keep saying the rosary at seven every evening because that's your mass time. Mm -hmm. That's that's when the family home at home is filled with the same graces that heaven is touching earth in my parents' sitting room at seven o'clock this evening, as it was in my grandparents. It, it's bringing it down into that place. Therefore, the houses become domestic chapels. We will be going back to mass, there's no doubt, but Our Lady will get us there. You know? Hold on to her. Absolutely. Thank you, Father. And that's a perfect segue into our next um